So just when you thought the search was over because you finally decided on some bare dynamic DT 770s, DT 880s, maybe DT 990s headphones, because you decided on the 250 ohms version, you're now learning that you won't be able to use them unless you're willing to spend a few extra hundred dollars on an amp because apparently they are hard to drive. So now you're back at the drawing board with a lot of new questions. Do I need an amp to use these with my phone? Will these work well with my laptop, with my computer, with my audio interface? Well, if that's the case, then you are in the right spot because my name is Andrew Dandrew and I am on a mission to search this entire wonderful universe for answers to the most important questions and explain these answers to you like you are five. So let's see if you need an amp to use 250 ohms impedance rated headphones or if you can get along without one using your current devices. I'm talking mostly here in this video about Bear Dynamics, the DT770s, the DT880s, and the DT990s all have editions rated at 250 ohms sharing the same sensitivity, but this could also apply to other headphones that share the same ratings. So do you need an amp for them? The answer is quite easy to find out using actual numbers, but that's a little bit boring, isn't it? So to find out the answer, I try to gather as many devices as possible, devices that output to headphones. And I try to include your usual suspects like a modern gaming laptop, a desktop computer, your phones, some budget phones, some more expensive phones like an iPhone, a Bluetooth receiver, gear that in theory shouldn't stand a chance against headphones rated so high in terms of impedance. I picked a few reference tracks and I started doing listening tests, plugging the headphones into each of the devices that I picked but I realized soon that I had a huge problem. My ears are subjective and I couldn't trust them 100%. So I built a DIY measurement rig to help me record some of these devices just to confirm what I was hearing. This is by no means a reference quality measurement rig, but it is a tool that allows me to do consistent recordings. So it should provide a nice level of objectiveness to this test. All of these devices were judged against my usual setup, which includes an amp. And I wanted to see how much of a compromise you make when you take the amp out of the equation and you plug these headphones straight into these devices. But what was I listening for? How do you know that a device on its own is not enough to work with these sort of headphones? In a nutshell, you need an amp if your current device can't get your headphones loud enough, if you're getting sound but it's very distorted, or if you get some weird frequency response issues like bloated bass or missing high mids or details. The headphones I decided to test with were the DT770s Pro, of course. The reason is that they're closed back and this should make it a little bit easier for the measurement rig to record just the sound of the headphones without too much ambient noise. And it should also make it easier for me to spot any sort of bass bloating due to improper impedance matching. The DT990s, as you probably know, are a little bit more bass heavy and I figured it would just be easier for me this way. So after all of these tests, the final answer is no, you don't need an amp. You could benefit from one if you're really, really interested in sound quality. If you want to have the best experience, then yes, it would be great to have, but you don't need it to use these headphones. Saying that you need an amp implies that without one, these headphones are unusable. However, if you listen to rock music, to pop music, to metal, to hip hop, to electronic music, to anything that's modern, that's low in dynamic range, and that's heavily compressed during the mastering stage, you should be fine as long as you don't want very, very loud headphones. Even if you're trying to play computer games and you're plugging the headphones straight into the back of your motherboard in the built-in sound card, you should be fine. There will be a compromise in sound quality. These headphones are very well engineered and they can produce amazing quality when being fed with a great signal from a great converter and a great amp. But the compromise isn't that huge to make me say that, nah, these headphones are just unusable without my amp. We're gonna go deeper into this in the following video where we talk about the interaction between a headphone output and some headphones, but there are these things called headphone power requirement calculators. Plugging the specs of our headphones into such a calculator reveals that for our headphones to produce a sound pressure level of 100 decibels, they require 0.79 volts, 3.16 milliamps of current totaling 2.5 milliwatts of power. If we go for an even safer 
185 decibels in terms of sound pressure. The values drop to 0.14 volts, 0.56 milliamps, and 0.08 milliwatts. Now, finding these specs is just the first part. The hardest part is finding the specs of the devices you actually want to use your headphones with because manufacturers don't really show these at all most of the time. But as a general rule of thumb, portable audio players will produce somewhere between 0.5 and 1 volts. Your USB audio interfaces will produce somewhere around 1 to 1.5 volts. And most of your home audio devices that stand on a desk will produce somewhere around 2 volts. So you can see that these values are well in the ranges that your home devices can produce. When you're going to run into trouble is if you want to listen to audio file recordings, to recordings that have very high dynamic range and have huge peaks. If you want to watch a lot of movies that also have a high dynamic range, because this is very difficult to reproduce content. You could also run into some problems if you're trying to use these headphones with some phones that comply to the European laws of maximum headphone volume. But these are pretty much the only two cases when it's a really big no. Otherwise, these headphones are usable. Instead of do I need an amp, a better question would be what sort of benefits would I see if I decide to upgrade to a proper amp to use together with these headphones. A good dedicated amp will be able to achieve very high volumes with no distortion at all. You will also get very good channel separation, you won't run into channel imbalances where, you know, when you're using budget gear and you're turning the volume up and down, you sometimes hear one ear cup getting louder than the other. You won't see this happening with a very good dedicated amp. You also won't have any sort of frequency response issues that you get when you have impedance matching problems because a good dedicated amp will probably have a very low output impedance. Overall, all of the components used to build the amp will be of a higher quality and this will probably also add small improvements to the sound. But we need to remember the law of diminishing returns because you will be paying good money and whether or not it's worth it for you only you can decide. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Andrew Dandrew. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped. And if you enjoyed it, maybe click the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified when I upload a new video. And until then, have a great day, a great week and see you.